anyway. Um, so my name is Ruth Poland, and I'm the science teacher for the Island Pathways program. Um, all of us teachers in the program have been working really hard all year with these guys on their Eastern Maine Skippers project. Um, so our group is the Island Pathways program for ninth and 10th grade. And we chose two different issues to work on. The um, major question for this year was how do individuals and communities manage and restore local fisheries? And our first group decided that bait prices are a really big issue in the lobster fishery. And so they researched alternative baits to herring. Our second group looked at urchin populations and how the populations crashed and decided that they wanted to figure out a solution to um, bringing back the urchin population. So without further ado, I'm going to let the bait group take it away. Hi, my name is Colby. I'm Jackson Moss. And I'm Yes. Caleb Young. I'm Phil Palin. And we are representing the 910 bait group for Island Pathways. And our issue was to find an alternative bait for lobster. Why did we choose bait prices? We had heard different things about the cause. Is the herring population declining? Are herring just moving to different places? Is there another reason prices are getting higher and higher? We had heard from fishermen there might be other baits that were cheaper and caught close or the same amount. We went through many field trips, went to many places. One of them was the Scudic Institute, Center for Cooperative Aquaculture Research, University of Maine, Orono, Maine Maritime Academy, Eldrith Interview Zone from the DMR, Bar Island to correct like the green crabs. We with quite a few people over the years. One of them was Paul Molino, who's the main fisherman, Melissa Malmstadt, Jimmy Hanscom, who's the co-owner of Bar Harbor Bait, and a local fisherman out of Bar Harbor, Val Peacock, Organo Bait, and Melissa Smith from the DMR. What is the issue? Damning is the main bait for lobster, right? And as you can see, the chart up there started in 1950, and it's been pretty steady since until 1972 and started skyrocket. The price of the herring has gone up rapidly in past few years. High bait prices affect many different fishermen and also restaurants. Why are bait prices so high? There are many different reasons why. Herring fishing companies are finding fewer fish and they're increasing the prices to make the same amount of money as they used to. Herring may have changed the migration pattern in the past few year, two years. Much more herring has been caught inshore rather than offshore near to Georgia's Bank. How we chose a solution? Well, we first started with four different ones. Find a way to regulate the herring cost, find an alternative bait to herring, find a way to increase all the population, and change herring fishery regulations. We decided to focus on researching alternative bait because it felt like the most hands-on, and we were curious about alternative bait in this fishery. So our solution was to find a cheap and effective alternative bait to help preserve the herring population. What we decided to do, well, we went to the fishermen's forum and we handed out surveys to different people and had them fill them out. We also made a post on Facebook and we got very many comments on what fishermen thought we should use there. We organized, we organized the results and talked about we decided to try four different baits and a set number of traps to compare how much each bait would catch. And those four different baits were black cod, organo bait, lockfish, and alpines. So some of our challenges were that it was uh, hard to find a, the root of the problem. And when we went to Bar Island to um, get green crabs, we got five out of one we wanted to get 15, 20, or more to help with the bait. And it was hard to find someone to go out and place traps out in the water for us. And time was hard because it was the ending of the year. And then finally, we found someone, a fisher, a main fisherman named Jimmy Hanscom helped us with 26 traps with the four different types of bait that we caught. And on this data sheet, you can see that our four baits that we used for our wives and rockfish we got 1.3 keepers and 8.7 um, uh, sublegal. So we got way more sublegal than keepers that we wanted to. The black cod got um, 1.2 uh, keepers and sublegal was 1.3. And organo bait got nothing out of both. 
what we learned. The number one thing we learned is that there are lots of different components in how to sustain a fishery. It is really complex. We learned that lobster bait is in a crisis. Many of us knew nothing about lobster fishing before this. It is important for fishermen to know about the issue. We, need e we each need to do our part to keep the fishery sustainable by following regulations. So our next steps were to collect more data and to be sure of our results. Uh, you may not know, but fishermen are very skeptical of new things, so we need to show them proof of our results and try to encourage them to try alternative baits. This would reduce the pressure on the herring fish, or fishery, hopefully helping the population to be more successful. All right, thank you.